Do you sometimes wonder how sharing actually works in OneDrive? It can be confusing and quickly get out of control if you let users share with whoever they like. But there are plenty of controls in Microsoft 365 that can help you get a grip on sharing. Today I'm going to explain where you can change the default sharing settings for OneDrive and SharePoint, how sharing links work on files, and how you can find out what files have been shared by your users. Russell here, Editorial Director of Petri.com in this life and IT consultant in a previous one. So let's have a look at some of the really basic aspects of sharing files in OneDrive. Now, while it may seem a little bit complicated, it's actually really pretty simple once you understand the concepts of how this works. So here I have a Word document in my OneDrive, and you can see under the sharing column that it's private. So it's not currently shared with anybody. So I want to share this file. So there are a couple of ways I can do that. So I can either come over to the sharing icon here and click it, or I can click here on the three dots and I can select share from the menu. So either of those methods will open this dialog. Now there are two ways that you can share this file. So either you can send a link via email and click the send button, or you can create a link and just copy it. So these are the two ways you can do it. Whichever way you choose, you need to decide what the people can do with the link once you've shared it. So by default, it's set to anyone with the link can edit the file. So I'm going to choose to copy a link and then send it to somebody in Teams. And in order to customize what they can do with the link once it's shared, all I need to do is click on the default setting, anyone with a link, and then I can choose to change that setting. So for instance, I could set it to only people in my tenant, which is Wimbiz Weekly. So I could choose that. Specific people, if I wanted to make a list of specific people. So I'm going to share this with Argo. So I'm going to put his name there and then I get to decide what he can do with it. Now, I don't want him changing the orders for 2022. So I'm going to set it to can view so he can only open the document. He can't make any changes and I can choose if I want to stop him from downloading the document, but I'm not going to do that. So I can now apply these settings creating a shareable link and that has now been copied to my clipboard so I can paste this into a Teams message or an email or a WhatsApp chat or wherever and however I want to share this specific link. So if I close that and I'm going to refresh the browser and you can see here under sharing it's now flipped to shared. So if I want to see who this document is shared with, all I need to do is click on shared here under the sharing column and you'll be able to see a list of all the links that give access to this document. Now, at the moment, there's only one link to this document. Obviously, I'm the owner of the document, so I get direct access to it. I have the option to stop sharing. And also, I can see the links that are configured for sharing on this document and modify them if I want. So I'm going to close that for a minute. So one thing that's important to understand about sharing in OneDrive is that you can configure more than one link on a document. So if I come back over to sharing again, and I want to configure another link on this document, I want to share this document with anybody who has the link. So I'm going to generate a link. And now I have a shareable link that I can, you know, email or send in a Teams message. I can also add another link. So I'm going to say anybody in Wimbiz Weekly with the link and I'm going to say they can review it and suggest changes. And I'm going to apply that as well. If I come back over to shared, you can see now that there are three different links given access to this document. Another way that you can see who this document is shared with is to click on the three dots here, come down to details, and you will get a link here to manage access. And you will see here are free links given access to this document. So what if you're an administrator and you want to control how your users can share documents? So if you come over to your homepage in Office and then click Admin, that will open up a new tab. And to control sharing for OneDrive, you need to go to the SharePoint Admin Center. So I'm going to click here, Show All. 
And then I'm going to switch to the SharePoint Admin Center. And again, that will open up another new tab. And then I'm going to expand policies and I'm going to click here, sharing. Now, what you get here is a sliding scale of ability from most permissive to least permissive in terms of sharing. Now, the default sharing is that users can basically share files with anybody that has a link and they don't require sign in for that link. Now, you can make that less permissive. So you can say that, well, OK, users can share links with people who are not part of my Microsoft 365 tenant, but in order to get access to that document, they either have to sign in with an email address that's been registered with Microsoft 365. If they don't have that, then at the very least, they need to provide a verification code to confirm that it's really them that's opening the document. And again, we can say maybe only existing guests that have an account in the organization's directory, or we can say that we're not going to allow our users to share documents with external guests at all. Now, at a very basic level, you can, of course, configure this slider as you like, but there are some more advanced settings if you want to configure them. Now, what's interesting about all of this, that this has changed over the years, and Tina from New York actually had a question about some guest external users that were appearing in her list of users in Microsoft 365. And Tina wanted to know, well, I've never actually chatted in Teams with any of these users, but nevertheless, they, for whatever reason, still appear in the list of users in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So where on earth have they come from? So my answer to that, Tina, is probably where they came from is that in the past, either you or somebody in your Microsoft 365 organization has shared a document with them. And in the past, the most permissive setting was something different than it is today. So in the past, the most permissive setting was guests must sign in using the same account to which sharing invitations are sent. So if you shared a document with a user to, I don't know, russell at petri.com, and the only way I would be able to open that document was if I created an account in Microsoft 365, registered my email address, so russell at petri.com, and then in order to get access to that document, I would have automatically become a guest user in your Microsoft 365 tenant. So that would have happened without you actually having to do anything. That's not the default setting as it stands today, but just a few years ago, that was how the default sharing settings in OneDrive worked. So that's where those users have most likely come from. So you've got the option, of course, to reinstate those default settings, which are, of course, less permissive than today's standard settings. So here you can configure the default sharing settings to be whatever you like in terms of what the default setting is. Is it anyone with the link or only people in your organization? Uh, can they view or edit the document? And of course, the less permissive the sharing settings become in your organization, then the harder it is for your users to share documents with anybody they like. And of course, you know, that has its pluses and minuses. It makes your data and information potentially more secure, but then it also makes it harder for users to work out how they actually share documents with users outside of your organization if you're going to allow that at all. So if you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. And I'm going to leave a video on the screen, which you might find interesting, which covers the top five new features in Microsoft Teams that appeared in July 2022. But that's it for me from this week, and I'll see you next time.